All right, for starters, get a clip of yourself waving your arms around like a goober because that's how you make magic. Unless, of course, you have a pointy stick, then you point that as hard as you can. But otherwise, waving your arms around is really the way to do it. All right, once you have the clip, go to Effects Library, go ahead and grab a new Fusion Composition. Go ahead and drag that on top. Cut your clip down to the length you need, or make your Fusion Composition as long as you want. We'll come back to the clip later. Go ahead and go to Fusion. All right, once you're in here, zoom in a little. Make as much room as possible. I'll size your composition, so go ahead and add a background. Go ahead and pipe that in. Open the inspector. Take the alpha down. Next, we're going to start off with our text. Add in your text. Go ahead and click on your text node. Add in a bunch of letters. Choose a script that looks kind of funky, looks like a spell. Set you a script. Works pretty well. Now, the trick out into this is to bend it. So we're going to make it into an image plane. Get an image plane 3D. Go ahead and add that in. We're also going to need a bender 3D. Now, at this point, now that you've sized everything, you can get rid of the background. Go ahead and just pipe in your text. Throw your image plane on, hold shift, go over the line, you can just add it in. Our image plane, we're going to go ahead and make subdivisions 50 to give us enough room. Then under transform, go down and make the scale 50 as well. Go over your bender, bring it to the viewer. It's not showing up, which means I forgot to attach it. Stubborn little guy there, isn't he? And the real reason it won't go through is because I don't have a render. So go ahead and add in a render 3D. That way everything can be attached. All right, now if I drag bender 3D up there, I'm going to go ahead and change this to X. And we're we'll bring the amount up to one. Go ahead and change your angle to 90. And now we have our ring of text. Now you can go back to your text. You can add in a few extras. You can change the tracking a little bit. All up to you, however you want to do it. I want to have the text glowing and moving a little bit. So we're going to add a little bit of a feature here. We're going to add in a fast noise to do this. Go ahead and go to your fast noise. Hit F2. Rename it for something short. We can't pipe that in directly. Go ahead and go back to your text. Go to shading. Go down. Change this from solid to image. For your color image, go ahead and type in the name of the fast noise, and now it's connected. Now we can go to our fast noise, go to your color, and we're going to give it a couple colors. We're going to give it kind of a darker orange, a lighter yellowish color in there. Get this gold, kind of reddish look. Now go back to your text, go ahead and go to 2 under your shading. Go ahead and enable it. This will give it an outline. We can go ahead and keep it on a red outline. That'll look good for now. We're going to change that as we add blur effects and glows. It's going to change a little bit, so don't worry about the color too much right now. Next up, there needs to be a bit of a steam smoke feeling coming from this, so for that we're going to use a P emitter. Go ahead and put in a P turbulence and go ahead and put in a P render because we need to render it out. Go ahead and go to your P emitter. Go to region. For region, we're going to change to bitmap because we're going to use our text as the emitter. Go back to your controls on your P emitter. Go ahead and crank that number up. Let's go to a thousand. It's a lot of power controls, I know, but it'll come in handy. Let's set the variance to 250. Let's go 50. Bring down the lifespan so they're more clustered but shorter. And then under velocity, go ahead and give it a slight velocity, very slight. For the direction, set the angle to 90. So they're moving upward. So under your style, we're going to leave it at point. We're going to go ahead and open up these other controls. We're going to change the color over life. Go ahead and add in a few. Again, the colors are up to you. You can use them however you like. We're going to change these in a little bit anyway. All right, the real magic of this happens when you add in a blur. Go ahead and add that in. If it's not adding in, go ahead and click on your render. Go from 3D to 2D. And now we can just increase our blur, get this wispy effect. All right, now we're going to want that to go around in a circle, so we're going to add in these two nodes again. Go ahead and just copy and paste those over, paste them in. We're going to change one thing over on this image plane. Go to your transform, go down to scale, and on the Y, we're going to change that to 25. All right, now that we got both those made, let's go ahead and add in a merge 3D. Go ahead and merge it in. You can see our result. We can change our text size a little bit too, if we need to. And actually, let's go ahead and change a few things on our text. So go back to your text, go to your transform. Under here, we have a whole bunch of options. If we want it to look a little bit more interesting, we can go ahead and change some of these shear options. Add in rotation if you need to. Now they look a lot more like symbols. I brought my render here. I'm just going to move it back in the Z axis. Looks like we have an issue there, so we're going to change that. Little tip, if you don't want this rendering all the time, go ahead and close out one of those viewers. Have the one viewer that you can work with. All right, so it looks like the issue is this. Now oh, everything should be looking pretty good. Let's go to that render. All right, go back to our text. Add in a couple more letters. There we go. And we can change the tracking, the spacing, and rotation, however we need to make this work. All right, still a few more details to go. There needs to be a ring going through the center of these. So we're going to add a shape 3D. All right, so after we add in the shape 3D, go ahead and change it to cylinder. We're going to make it a radius of 8, height 2, subdivisions 50 again. Actually, 2 is too big. We need to make it 0 0.05. Let's go ahead and put it in. Now I got that tiny little ring going around. We're going to go bring their merge 3D up so we can see everything. All right, those aren't aligned, so we're going to have to go over to our translation. Go to Z, make it 8, and now we have that ring going around. Now we go to the material on our shape 3D. We change the coloring a bit. Go ahead and make it kind of a lightish yellow. 
bring down the opacity. All right, now that we got that looking the way we want, let's go ahead and add in some blurs and add in some distortion things. Go ahead and add in a glow. We're gonna be using lots of glows. This is all general tweaking that you can do however you like. One bad thing you might notice is that there's a weird cut right where these bend intersecting itself, so don't go too heavy on that glow. You'll have to blend it in with a glow later on. And if you really wanna get crazy and add some extra detail and movement to stuff, you can always add in a fast noise and a displace. Those always kind of go hand in hand. You can increase detail, contrast, a lower brightness, but you want to add in some seethe rate to get some motion. Let's go ahead and duplicate that. We're going to move this here, plug it in right there, and that'll give us some motion over time from the particles. And also we had put in this turbulence, which we didn't touch on, but we can add in a little bit of motion if we want to bring down that Y scale, a few adjustments to a few other things. We can change the effect a little bit there. The density, how close they are together, what this provides is just a movement trail. That's all just to change the strength and direction of these particles. That's really up to you how you want to do that. The last thing we need to put in are some little sparks coming off. We're going to do a bit like we did with the other uh, emitters. So we're just going to copy and paste these over here. I'm going to add in one extra one. I'm going to add in a vortex, P vortex. And I'm going to want these particles to emit from a shape. And I'm going to actually just choose the same shape we had here. I'm going to make a few details on it. I'm going to change the height to be a little bit bigger. I'm going to go to my P emitter. I'm going to change region. In this case, I'm going to do mesh because I'm using a shape instead of just a flat text. I'm going to say surface because we don't have a volume. You just have a flat ring. Go ahead and plug that in. On our emitter, we're going to change a few things. We don't want thousands of particles coming out. In fact, we only want a few because we want a few sparks coming around. Uh, change the variance down. Change the life stand back up. We do want some a little more velocity on this one because we want them flying around. And you can change some of these angles however you want. Add in some variance so they kind of just scatter around and it's a little bit more random. Now under style, we're going to change a few things. I want them to start off pretty white, but I want them to go to pretty red as they leave here and they stop being whitish yellow. They start being red further on out. I'm also going to change this to blob instead of points. We want big flakes. And the alpha down and I'm going to change the size over time. So I want them to start off fairly big and then kind of fade out. And if we go through it, give it a second, you can see some of these sparks coming off. I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees actually because I don't like that seam. And we'll go into the merge and we'll rotate the entire thing. Rotate 90. And that took us off the page a little bit because of where that pivot is. Our pivot's in a really weird spot. But if I change that, I can change that to the center bit more and go ahead and fix that. All right, that's looking pretty good. Add in a few more glows and another blur. You can add in a 3D displace as well as fast noise. And these are just things that you could add in to your emissions, to your ring, to give it a little bit of a wobble. I'm just gonna leave those alone for now, but we might add in this glow and this blur. And now that's looking pretty nice. Now that we have that built, now we gotta get it to orbit around someone, which requires a few fancy masking techniques. So let's go back to our footage, and you can see here's the problem right now. It's in front of me. So I'm gonna disable this right now. Click the Fusion Composition, push D, disable that. I'm gonna select my clip, hold Alt, drag it up to make a duplicate of it. We're gonna mask this clip out. But before I do that, I'm actually gonna turn this back on, turn off these clips, and go ahead and render out this clip. Call it ring or something. Uh, the reason you want to render it because you don't want it all that process and happen over and over and over again and this will help us with our mask so make a render clip once you have your clip go ahead and bring it in go ahead and throw it on your timeline i don't need the audio so i will get rid of the audio go ahead and re-enable your clip and now we can start doing some masking go ahead and select that clip go into fusion and we're just going to make a mask around everything and i'm going to make a few of these and what we're going to do is we're going to set these to add what i'm going to do is i'm going to create mask around some of the central parts I don't need to mask out my entire body, just wherever that ring's gonna cross and really where it's gonna go behind me. And the best way to do this is just to do it in sections so you're not having to move all of the points all the time. And do as few points as possible. You can always add in more points, but it's a pain to move a lot of points right off the bat. As well, so I'm done with that, I can go ahead and plug it in. Just the mask as needed. This is where it comes in handy, have multiple masks. All right, and you can see the problem here. Now that I've masked it out, now I'm in front of the ring, but that's okay. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this clip, go ahead and right click, go new compound clip, just save it as something like mask. Other thing you need to do is make a compound clip of this one as well. 
I went ahead and made a compound clip. I just called it main. Once you've done that, you can go into the fusion composition. Now, once we're in there, we take these two files, drag down your mask and your main. We don't need them merged. Go ahead and delete that. Figure out which is which. Go ahead and put your main footage down here. Go ahead and merge it in. Uh, go ahead and switch it. We want it to be the background. And this is where the mask is going to come in. We're going to mask it out where the ring's going in front of me and behind me. So go ahead and take your mask. We're going to need a new image plan. We're going to put it in to a new merge 3D. So let's move this stuff forward. Um, we're going to add in a new merge down here before the render. Go ahead and merge that in. Now we can see it's really small. Let's go ahead and see what's going on. Our merge here and the ring is way back there. So the two things we're going to need to do, we're going to need to first scale that up to go over footage and then we're going to need to move the ring. So let's go ahead and bring this up. I'm going to go ahead and click on my image plane. I'm going to go to transform and I'm going to move this forward. And I'm just going to try and get it in the right position. Now it's not looking great because we have this glow and blur on right now. And you don't need this glow and blur. It will affect this mask obviously because it's coming before it. You can either keep it on or what I did was I animated it coming on as the ring came on. But for now we're going to just turn those two off. We're going to go back to our image plane and we're just going to line these two clips up. And you see my mask didn't do a great job. I would need to extend that out further and then keyframe it all. Right now, I need to move this ring. So I'm going to go ahead and go on this merge, and I'm going to move this forward. There it is, but it's way too huge. It's out of frame. So let's bring that up into our viewer. Actually, I'm going to move my mask on there. So there's my mask. There's my ring. Let's go ahead and bring that down, and then we can move it to where we want it. So the mask will probably work at this point, unless I make it at an angle or do something else, in which case, you know, it'll have that clipping there and I would need to fix that mask. But that's pretty good. Now we have the ring going in front of me and behind me and I can animate it, I can rotate it. If I want to animate it coming on, all I need to do is go to the text and there's this right on feature. That's how I animate this text coming on. And then if I want to animate the ring coming on, then you just go to this angle feature on it and that'll animate that coming on. Now I didn't go over this turbulence or vortex, but that's just to change the particles and their direction. You can change the parameters however you want. To make it easier for you, I did put this composition on my Buy Me A Coffee page, so you can download it and you just change the parameters how you need. What you will need to do is you will have to find your own main footage here, as well as do your own mask. See what you like and don't like, and feel free to follow along with this video. And that's how you make magic.